Close your eyes, focus on the breath. As for everything else right now, you can let it go. Your thoughts of the past, thoughts of the future, thoughts of the birds. Let the birds sing on their own. You don't have to comment on them. Just stay with the sensation of the breath. Feel the breath all the way through the body. It's a basic principle in the teaching that in order to get something good out of the teaching, you first have to let go. There's a paradox in the book Awareness itself. There's one point where John Fuing is saying, everybody says to let go, let go, let go. But there's more to the practice than just letting go. You also have to develop, develop good qualities in the mind. But there's another point where someone who's been meditating for a long time comes and complains to him that she's been meditating for many years and hasn't gained anything out of the meditation. And he just says, we don't meditate to gain, we meditate to let go. So how do you put those two teachings together? Well, developing doesn't mean we develop things to hold on to them forever. We develop them so that they can take us across to safety, like the raft. You take the twigs and branches of the trees on this side of the river, and you bind them together, and then you use that raft to take you across. But you have to make an effort. If you let go of the raft, you're going to die, get swept away by the river. You hold on to the raft, and then you get across. And then when you get to the other side, then you let go of the raft. And there you are, free. You don't have to hold on to anything at all. So ultimately, yes, we do practice for letting go. But before we let go, we have to learn how to hold on. Hold on wisely. And if we don't have anything good to hold on to, then we've got to develop it. In other words, if you look at your concentration and you say, it's not getting where, where I'd like it to be, you can't say, well, I'm seeing how concentration is inconstant, stressful, not self, so I'll just let it go. It's something you have to develop first. It's like tying together a raft and seeing it fall, fall apart in the river. It doesn't mean you say, well, I'll just give up in the raft. You've got to go back and try it again, try it again, until you get a raft that holds, holds together all the way across. So yes, we do let go and we do hold on. We have to learn how to hold on wisely. And if we don't have anything good to hold on to yet, well, we can make it inside. But before we can gain anything, we do have to learn how to let go of other things. This is why the teaching starts with generosity. We're going to gain something good out of being generous, but first you have to give, give them something up. You have to talk yourself into doing it, but then there's that item that you have to give up. And only when you give it up can you gain a quality of the mind that's more spacious, where you can be proud of the fact that you're not just heavy on the earth, that you're actually helpful to other people. And that sense of well-being, that sense of self-esteem that comes from the generosity, that becomes what you gain for the time being. Hold on to that for the time being. Same with virtue. There are a lot of actions you're going to have to give up. If you want to find happiness, you have to give up killing, stealing, illicit sex, lying. The hardest one, of course, is lying. Because so many times there are little white lies we tell in the course of the day. And we think that because they're white, they, they're not lies, but they're lies. And they still have their karma consequences. You have to learn how to give these things up if you're going to gain the sense of stability and the mindfulness and alertness that come from virtue. The same with meditation, as the Buddha says. You should stay focused on the body in and of itself, ardent, alert, and mindful, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. If you want to gain concentration, you've got to give up your interest in the world right now. Everything outside, beyond the level of your skin, beyond the level of your cocoon of energy of your body, that's out of bounds. If you find your thoughts going off in that direction, you bring them back. Only when you let go of things outside can you develop something really good inside. Even if it's only temporarily that you let them go still. You want some space inside where you can develop concentration. Then you've gained the concentration, but again, you don't just hold on to it. You learn how to use it to get you across, to develop more discernment, to develop more insight. In other words, you use the good things you gain out of generosity, virtue, meditation, to get you further and further across the stream. Only then, when you get to the other side, that's when you totally let go. And the raft can do what, it's want at that point, what it wants at that point. That's when you're free. So we don't just let go. 
If your virtue isn't good yet, you don't let go of your virtue. If your concentration isn't good yet, you don't let go of your concentration. You hold on to these things. That's known as learning how to let go wisely and how to understand the teachings of the Ajans, what they're talking about. Because sometimes it, they seem to be saying, go left, go left, go left. Other times they say, go right, go right, go right. Well, it depends on which side of the road you're going to fall off. If you're falling off the left side, they'll, they'll say, go right. If you're falling off the right side, they'll say, go left. When you understand how to use their teachings like this, you can get the most benefit out of them.